in 2018. Naval Postgraduate School's Captain Wayne Hughes, with co-author Admiral Robert Guerrier, released the third edition of Captain Hughes's popular book on fleet tactics. Titled Fleet Tactics and Naval Operations, this third edition addresses classic principles from the first two editions, published in 1986 and 2000 respectively, and adds current thoughts on information operations and full naval operations. In this first in a series of interviews with Captain Hughes about key elements of his work, we will focus discussion on the six cornerstones of naval tactics in history and how they will impact the future of naval combat. Well, congratulations, Captain Hughes, on the third edition of Fleet Tactics and Naval Operations. We're going to talk today more about the first chapter, the six cornerstones. Mm -hmm. Tell me, where did the six cornerstones come from? What the audience needs to know is that they just emerged as I was uh, writing the book. Uh, and uh, the, 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 they stem from the first edition. The first edition, second edition, and third edition all have the same cornerstones, which okay. means they've stood the test of time. Uh, recently, the Marines have gotten interested and in, uh, asked me to adapt them for the, their purposes. and. So I gave them a seventh cornerstone, <laughs> uh, but th the main thing is uh, th they're, uh, they're sturdy and they're durable and uh, I think they're wise. Well, let's start with the first cornerstone. Sailors matter most. What are the lessons here? I think the uh, main thing to remember is uh, this sounds trite, but it's really, uh, I'll, I'll try and bring it alive for you. Um, the uh, uh, Nelson uh, set the example by his superb leadership, creation of a band of brothers of his captains. Uh, his captains were all, uh, <coughs> knew what he wanted and knew how to get it for him. Uh, they used their imagination when they did too and they stuck with his plan and they won battles and they also trained their crews to be superb. Fast forward to World War II and leaders like Spruance and Nimitz, uh, submariners like Mush Morton and aviators like Butch O'Hare all had the skills that are exemplars of what I'm talking about in, in this uh, quality of, of what it, why, why it takes individuals. And I also uh, would hasten to mention the machinist mates and the radar men and the mm -hmm. Uh, gunner's mates on each individual ship who <coughs> had to be trained, had to be competent. So uh, in, in summary, uh, the, there are a number of things that should come to mind every time we're talking about the importance of the, the, the fighting man and woman in the modern Navy. Uh, leadership, uh, morale, trained forces, physical and mental conditioning, willpower and its importance, and then finally the physical attribute of endurance. The second cornerstone you address is doctrine is the glue of tactics. What is fleet doctrine and how does it guide tactics? Different people have different ideas about doctrine, but uh, it was very clear to me that what I, I really wanted to emphasize that is doctrine is what guides uh, forces in battle. Uh, I, I think I can summarize very quickly by saying doctrine in, in battles is like a football playbook. Hmm. Uh, you, we had uh, over the centuries uh, ways to communicate different plays to be executed in, in the battle uh, from early days until uh, not so much and not so skillfully today, but uh, I think we need to restore this, this combat doctrine ideal, but it's like a, it's like a football playbook. Uh, you call the play, uh, you may change it on the field. Uh, each individual player knows what the play is supposed to accomplish and he executes it in his own way, which may not be quite what uh, it started out to be. Let's go to the third cornerstone. To know tactics, know technology. 
What is the relationship between the two? I, I, I did not know when I set out to uh, think about uh, the, the influence of technology on combat, but uh, it's, it's certainly uh, it, over the years I've come to believe that tactics and technology are two sides of a single coin. Hmm. You can have the technology, but if you don't adapt new tactics to exploit it fully, you may not really uh, get to where you need to go with your new technology. Technology is a, is a potential. The tactics are the fulfillment of that potential. Uh, it works the other way around, too. If you have, um, I, I had a boss named Ike Kidd who said, uh, you, you don't fulfill your destiny by telling, by putting in a request for a new technology uh, because you may have to start fighting tomorrow. Uh, his point was uh, when the technology is in hand, then you can use it, but until then, you've got to fight with what you have. The fourth cornerstone is the seat of purpose is on land. How does this tie to naval warfare? The, uh, th this one also might seem trite to the modern um, listener because um, recently most of our naval support operations have been uh, to back up forces on the land. And, uh, but over the years, that's not been true. Uh, historically, for example, again going back to the Battle of the Nile and Nelson, uh, when Nelson won that battle, a sea battle, uh, the, N Napoleon was isolated and eventually he had to give up his ambitions to control the Middle East and he had to retreat back to France. Uh, the Anglo-Dutch Wars were a war in which all the battles were at sea. The English never intended to uh, invade um, Holland and Certainly the Dutch had no ambitions to invade England, but they had this series of battles, three Anglo-Dutch wars, battle after battle, uh, exemplified by one of the British admirals named Monk. He said, uh, the, the, <coughs> the Dutch have too much trade and I intend to take it from them. Uh, and, and, and of course the Dutch, when they suffered the final defeat in the third battle, uh, did suffer grievously insofar as their prominence in, in history was concerned. In the fifth cornerstone, you quote Nelson when you say, a ship's a fool to fight a fort. Why is this a cornerstone? And do you see modern missile technology challenging this wisdom? This is my second favorite cornerstone because uh, there's a certain irony here. Uh, Nelson, the man who was supposed to have said, a ship's a fool to fight a fort, uh, lost an arm fighting a fort, lost an eye fighting another fort, uh, and at the Battle of Copenhagen, which he described as his most challenging battle, he was fighting forts along with the uh, Dutch Danish Navy, which was anchored and it was a very tough battle fighting forts. Uh, as you point out in, in the modern era, uh, forts are now land-based aircraft, land-based missiles, mm. And uh, all that does is make the challenge of uh, ships fighting against land-based firepower all the more difficult. It's a big challenge. It's something we must struggle with. It's something that is particularly pertinent now as we uh, are dealing with the defenses that China has established. And I think the, one of the things that is going to result is an awareness that uh, we may not have to fight forts if we can establish a sea denial capability of our own uh, against uh, the Russian forces and the Chinese forces. Sea denial is a lot easier than sea control. The Marines are involved right now because they're establishing a concept of uh, expeditionary advanced bases in which they would have um, forces for example, spread along the first island chain, and the first island chain uh, would be a threat to Chinese uh, operations in their own home China seas, and so th that they might feel compelled to attack us, and that puts the shoe on the other foot. Now we are the forts, 
defending against their need to be the ship's attacking force. Finally, but probably most famous, is attack effectively first. Can you address the historical evidence for this and how it inspired the Salvo equations? The last book before fleet tactics to be published by an American was by Admiral Robeson, assisted by his wife on the history of naval tactics. And his overall conclusion at the end of the book was the most important thing to remember in naval battles is to attack, attack, attack. Uh, I thought that was insufficient. I thought the, the, you, attacking uh, without good results uh, ain't good enough. You, you got to have, uh, you may not win the battle, but you got to uh, be able to attack effectively and you have to do it first because in modern missile combat, uh, too frequently if two fleets get in a dust up, it'll be mutual annihilation. Just the way we thought in World War II, uh, carrier battles would end up in a mutual annihilation if we weren't able to find them and attack them before they found us and attacked us. And, uh, and how true that was then and how true that is now. Uh, so attack effectively first uh, has been vindicated uh, in uh, every exercise, uh, computer simulation, uh, every other bit of evidence that I have been associated with as the way to win in, in the modern age of missile warfare, soon to be, and this is a good way to conclude this discussion, the age of robotic warfare and information warfare in which cyber operations and unmanned systems uh, are going to be more and more prominent. And in another discussion, we hope to talk a lot more about those topics I think that you added to the third edition. I think we're getting back to those two. Excellent. Well, thank you, Captain Hughes. And we look forward to talking to you again about more topics within the third edition of Fleet Tactics and Naval Operations. My pleasure. Thank you for taking a moment to view this first discussion in the series of interviews with Captain Wayne Hughes on the third edition of his book, Fleet Tactics. We hope you will take a moment to view other episodes in this series.